Grenada becomes flagship country for implementation of police record management information system. This story and more in the National Report. With the news for Thursday, 24th, February 2022, I am Christian Mitchell. Grenada is the first of eight Eastern and Southern Caribbean countries to implement the full police records management information system, PRIMIS, a web-based application that will be utilized by the Royal Grenada Police Force. This project, which is made possible under the United Nations Development Programs Initiative, Carry Secure, will allow officers to log in crime information. This includes calls for service, civilian reports at police stations, and information gathered from officer patrols. This program guarantees efficient record keeping as members of the police force execute their duties daily, capturing real-time data. Premise was piloted at three police stations in Grenada, South St. George, St. David, and Sotez. During the official launch on Thursday earlier today, USAID Regional Representative Mr. Clinton White welcomed the 26-module digital program in Grenada and commended the Royal Grenada Police Force for implementing Premise. The Royal Grenada Police Force has not only stepped forward but leaped ahead with the rollout of premise. You would be pleased to know that Grenada is the first country, let me say that, the first country to implement the full premise software using a localized data storage solution. <laughs> the system launched today will give police officers 21st century tools to tackle 21st century problems. It'll transform the way police do business on a daily basis by providing access to real-time disaggregated crime data that enhances intelligence gathering. During the first phase of the program, the RGPF trained more than 400 officers across all stations and departments. Ten of the force's 16 stations are already equipped with the capability to commence the initial phase of the project. Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin says they are already seeing the benefits of the system, although it has not yet been implemented in all police stations. I am convinced, colleagues, that premise will be a force multiplier in enhancing the RGPF's capacity to keep our nation and people safe. The Carry Secure Premise system will standardize crime reporting information, contributing to valid, reliable, consistent, and comparable data, which can be used to enhance citizen security through proactive, intelligence-led policing strategies. It will also deliver evidence-based analysis of crime statistics and inform national policy and decision-making to address the root causes of crime. Permanent Secretary with Responsibility for National Security, Marina Jessamy, is pleased that Grenada is the flagship country for this project and is considered a Tier 1 country given its high level of commitment. Premise will transition police stations from paper-based reporting to a digital format which will facilitate the collection and disaggregation of data, which will be useful in developing strategies for crime prevention and reduction. Premise will also allow for the collection and real-time analysis of data from the police, who in many cases are the first point of contact for victims of crime and violence. Grenada expressly condemns Russia's assault on the people of Ukraine, which is contrary to provisions of international peace and stability enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations. 
Grenada therefore calls for an immediate end to the hostilities. The long history of diplomatic engagement among countries provides adequate tools for the settlement of disputes without having to resort to violence, which hurts the very people who give leaders legitimacy in office. We therefore encourage diplomatic engagement to de-escalate existing tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Grenada reaffirms its commitment to the United Nations principles of respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states and believe that universal respect and adherence to these norms and principles of international law are fundamental to the maintenance of the international system and global peace and security. Representatives of Digicel and Flo have registered their commitment to continue providing top-class service to the citizens of CARICOM member states. Top officials of both companies were in Grenada this week to witness and solidify their support in the Declaration of St. George's towards the elimination of roaming charges. Achieving a single ICT space was approved by heads of government in CARICOM during a meeting in 2017 and after intense discussions in 2020 with telecommunication companies, an agreement was reached in what's described as a first step in accomplishing this goal. Seamless intra-Caribbean, intra-CARICOM roaming has always been identified as a flagship feature of the single ICT space. The CARICOM Secretary General requested the CTU to lead the ICT cluster of regional institutions in the forefront of the technical implementation. This cluster, namely the CTU, the Caribbean Broadcasting Union, CBU, the CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security, CARICOM Impacts, the Caribbean Center for Development Administration, CARICAD, and the CARICOM Secretariat developed the concept details and produce the vision and roadmap, as well as the integrated work plan for the single ICT space. That was President of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union and Minister for Information, Broadcasting and Telecommunications in the government of Antigua and Barbuda, the Honorable Milford Nicholas. Vice President South Caribbean Cable and Wireless Communications Curly Prescott notes his company's pride in being part of the process and announced that customers will begin to feel the reduction in roaming charges from as early as the first quarter of 2022. As we've demonstrated over the years, with continuous investments in deploying new technologies, we fully appreciate and understand the importance of a true Caribbean signal, single market with cost-effective, reliable connections at its heart. We at Cable & Wireless are therefore pleased to share that we have taken this first transformation step, transformational step to provide our valued CARICOM customers with significantly reduced roaming packages across the region, which deliver simple, consistent, and transparent rates, an overall reduction in customers' charges, and will eliminate the shock of receiving exorbitant bills. We will start to promote these in our markets in the coming weeks and months. DigiCell's Director of Government Affairs, Kieran Mulvey, hopes this process will continue until the dream of a single ICT space is achieved in the region. Today represents a significant initial milestone again on the roadway towards achieving a single ICT Caribbean space that is so vitally important not just for the social uh, aspects of the economy and peoples of the Caribbean, but for their economic development as well. I'd like to think it's a new dawn for us in terms of cooperation, in terms of working together to agree, achieve greater uh, understandings between us. And I think the declaration lays out that ambition for us all and the work we need to do uh, arising from today's declaration it just doesn't finish today with the signing of the declaration. It means we must continue to work together. Stay with us. The news will continue after the break.
Welcome back. The government of Grenada continues to create the enabling environment within communities for education institutions, sporting clubs, and residents to further develop. At Pearl St. Andrew, a conference room and washroom facility is presently under construction. On Monday, the GIS visited the project and spoke with the contractor, Alfred Abraham. The project is scheduled for completion next month. We have four um, toilet downstairs, two bathrooms, and two rooms for storing your, your, your goods, like your broom, your buckets, you know, you store that in, in, in the storerooms. Abraham says the facility under construction is very important as there are two education institutions in close proximity and the playing field is heavily utilized by a number of organizations. Resident Aaron Pierre welcomes the move by the government to construct the facility. I see that as a, a very much a significant initiative. At this time, having a, a washroom and a conference room especially a playing field of that magnitude in a community of pearls, which is very populated, and we are surrounded by two schools, and plus it is used by other communities around. I've seen that as a right move in the right direction, expecting much more to be done, but it's a wonderful start at this time. Finally, in the news, 16 Imani trainees attached to the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Development, Religious Affairs and Information are now equipped with first aid skills to help in the event of an emergency. They participated in two half-day training sessions in first aid and CPR, among others, under the guidance of Terry Charles, Managing Director of Charles Consultancy and Event Planning Services. Sarana Mitchell reports on the training course which took place in the conference room of the Ministry of Education. The 16 Imani trainees were selected for the first aid and CPR training course on a first come first serve basis. The facilitator Terry Charles conducted the course as a complimentary service to the community. The young people are learning first aid techniques, they're learning how to do bandages, they're learning how to do CPR, what to do if somebody is choking, how to interview somebody, how to do the head to toe examination of somebody. Um, they're learning also um, other sudden illnesses that can happen if somebody faints, if somebody goes into shock, if somebody is suffering from a stroke, how you detect that and what are the many things that could be done. Burns, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an intense training program. The participants say they are ready to assist in the case of an emergency. In my community, there is a lot of, um, let me say, emergency because I live in a community with a lot of elderly people. So I would use, I know I definitely would use what I learned today in that situation. And also, when I go out to dinner and thing, you will see a little emergency happening. So it would be used there. Mm -hmm. How ready are you? You say it's going to be used, but how ready are you? I'm 100% ready. I've learned a lot and I've taken it to practice and I'm do always, I will always be practicing after this session. Well, for my personal development, the reason, and the reason why I actually chose to learn it because um, I want to be an engineer, I'm um, electrical engineering, and the field that I want to be in requires help people there, so I think I want to be one of those in case of an emergency. It's so like a render aid to anybody that might have gotten shocked or anything. So that's why I actually wanted to learn this and will use it in my, my future. I'm going to use it um, basically in the workplace if an, an emergency occurs or if I'm out at the beach or at the supermarket. I can keep an eye out knowing that I have this training so that I can help others. Do you feel ready? Yes, I do because I've had previous training. Charles encourages as many people as possible to get certified in first aid so that they can help in the event of an emergency. I, I strongly advocate that every business place, every workplace, in fact every home, should have personnel that train in first aid because emergencies and accidents can happen anytime, any place. Um, we don't, we don't, we don't 
plan for it sometimes, but it can happen. But if you have persons who are trained in first aid, they can preserve life. They can prevent the injuries from worsening. Some things in life we cannot stop, but we could prevent it. We could lessen the impact of it. So the more persons we have trained in first aid and CPR, uh, both at home, workplace, that even the general public, um, we have beaches, we've got, we've got uh, waterfalls and sporting events. At all of these events, there should be personnel and equipment there so that should something happen, at least we have quick responders. So I encourage all business places, I encourage the, the government, ministries, every ministry to have a team of persons trained in every department who is aware of what to do should an emergency happen. The trainees will need to be recertified after two years. For The National Report, I am Sarana Mitchell. Thank you, Sarana. And that brings us to the end of The National Report for today, Thursday, February 24th, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Kristen Mitchell saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.